Welcome to this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be sh showing you how to use the mass functionality um, which has been made available in the latest version of the beta uh, of the software which is now for, for download on our website. Um, then there's a couple of steps to, to actually implementing a, a, a an expression, a mass expression, and um, I just want to show you those so that you can start to use that in your projects. So the project I'm going to demonstrate this in is a simple power monitoring application. So I'm going to set up a new project. Let's just change a couple of these. Let's change the background colour, um, and I'm going to set three boxes here uh, to have our three readings in. So I'm going to have voltage current and of course the power. So I'm just going to control and copy these. Don't need this to be too precise for demonstration purposes but I do think like things to look reasonably neat. Okay so we've got our three boxes um, first thing we do is we'll put the units in here so we'll put V for volts I'm just going to change the color of that to white resize this text box a little bit um, in fact I'll put that one up here copy that, change that for current actually just put that A for amps and then finally we'll have this one for power so we'll change that to W. Now I should really go and change all of these text boxes to give them unique identifiers but for the purposes of the demonstration to keep things nice and quick I will just move ahead and just I will name the text boxes that we're going to use for the actual readings so I'm going to name this one volts reading again change the colour of it to white It'll just look better on that blue background and I'm going to increase the size of that to 40. I tend to, I mean you don't need to do this, but I tend to just put the format of the text that is likely to appear in the text box, because obviously I'm going to equate this text box to an analog input in a moment. And I'll copy that. Current reading, change that there, and then one more text box required for the power. So as mentioned I'm going to use two analog inputs, one for the voltage, one for the current. Um, so I go down here in my library and select analog input. I'm going to just double click that twice to bring it in. So we're going to use the first channel for volts I'm going to set my range 0 to 10 volts. The analog input 2, we'll use this one. That's going to be current. Um, and again, I'll set this 0 to 10 volts. Um, obviously, depending on how you have your actual application scaled, these might, might vary. Um, the next thing to do is to set up the first two, so the volts and the current, as digital displays. So again, just double click on that from the library. Um, volts digital. I'm going to set that, equate that to the analog input element. Now, what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to I'm going to effectively in our application pretend that we have a 240 volt uh, AC signal that we're equating to 0 to 10 volts. So I'm going to replace the um, scaling here so at 0 volts we read 0 and at 10 volts we read 240 and then in the text element I'm going to choose the volts reading here I'm going to reduce the analog, 
the decimal places to 1. And then we do the same with the second digital readout. So another double click here. Current digital. Select the second analog input. 0 to 0, 10 volts will equate that. Let's say that's going to be 5 amps. And equate that to the current reading. Again, just change that to one decimal place. Right, so we now have our two analog inputs set up, and you can see here if I come down here and I can emulate the runtime here and use my sliders to demonstrate our two scales. As you can see, th at the moment, this text box here, which is showing the power hasn't it's basically just a static text box at the moment so what we want to do here is in the library and in the function element of the library we come down here and we double click on the mathematics builder uh, now this feature is still in beta it's one of the the major advances in this beta um, there are a couple of little things that um, we're looking to tune before the the, the release version but um, it is usable very much so and um, but if you do find anything that um, you think that we could improve or change please do let us know so I just double click to add a new expression here and then I can select any of the different um, elements from these drop downs so I could select a constant I could select um, a function so we've got various trigonometric functions and logarithmic functions I don't have any variables, I could use a variable from a project, but in this case what I'm looking to do is to take the scaled reading and I'm going to obviously be multiplying the volts by the current. So come down here and I can, what I actually want to do here is choose the volts digital, so the actual digital reading because that's after we've done the scaling. And I can choose any property from this, so in this case the scaled analog input value is the one that we want. and oops excuse me so up here and then we're going to add a second one so we need to multiply that and then the third part of the expression is to go and select the current digital reading and again scaled analog input voltage now the way that this works is this will effectively carry out this this um, calculation whenever it's called so to, to call this we need to do two things. The first thing that we need to do is we need to tell it what to do with the calculation after it's finished with it. So in the action set rules we'll go up here and we're going to create an expression whereby we take a property and in this case we want it to be the text box that's used for the to display the power reading and we set the property to text and we want to say we want that text box to equal the property of the mass function and the value that that calculates and it's all well and good but we now need to actually call that action and there's two ways we can do that we've either got a properties trigger so we could set using the properties trigger we could set it to um, run that action whenever an, a hardware input changes so for example an analog input changing but because we've got two analog inputs what what's what I'm going to do in this case is use use a timer so I'm going to run this every quarter of a second so 250 milliseconds and I'm going to call logic actions and that logic action will equate the text box to the mass function that we're um, we've set up. Now this may seem like a slightly long-winded way of, of going about it but we're all about trying to give flexibility to the design here and by keeping elements separate not only does it mean that we can keep the number of elements down that are in the library so that it's easier you, you'll get used to working with the same ones but it also gives you flexibility to use them in in a lot of different ways. So you can see here I can change my voltage and as I increase the current you can see here the power that we're taking is increasing. Now with this being a beta there are some 
issues at the moment. The main one here is that um, we can't suppress the decimal places at the moment. There is a workaround. This will be fixed in time for the, the, the proper release. But in the meantime, we go in here and we can use a string converter. And again, we want to equate this to the mass reader value. And then what I can do is actually um, tune the string that comes out of the mass builder to my requirements. This is going to be something that will be useful, um, particularly with serial interfacing, which is another thing that's been added with this. So I'm going to go down here and reduce the decimal places to 1. And then I need to change my set rule expression here to the string converter value. So string converter value. So again, I'm just equating my text box to that adjusted string. So you can see now, as I move that up, we have a calculated value, volts times amps equals watts. Thanks very much.